Good evening, good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And isn't it brilliant to see so many great faces here tonight? Lots of great numbers as well. How are we all doing tonight? Are we all right? Yeah. And a positive reaction as well. That's brilliant to hear. Well, I just take a little bit of bass out of my voice. Seems it's too deep. There we go. Right, okay, well as it says on the screen, season launch for 2022-2023. Let's forget about 21 and 22, shall we? Yes, yes. That's forgotten, it's consigned to the rubbish bin. Tonight is the start of a new era in many, many different ways. Even at my age, I get excited about new kits. Now is that sad? Is it just normal? I really don't know. In my book, it's just normal because I love my football. I love working here for Doncaster Rovers and I love to see what the lads are going to be wearing for the forthcoming campaign as well. As I'm sure you are as well. It's brilliant to see so many uh, shirts here tonight. We're going to be starting uh, with a you know, little bit of an introduction, a bit of a get to know you with the new players. We're going to be hearing from our head of football operations, a gentleman who we know very, very well is going to be joining us very soon. We are then going to be moving on to uh, news which I'm sure some of you have seen today and that is the news of the new Front of Shirt sponsorship. We're delighted uh, that Eco Power have um, come on board with the shirt sponsorship already doing so much around the football club and so much around the community of Doncaster. A really, really positive feeling around the club and the community as far as Eco Power's involvement is concerned. We're going to be hearing from those guys a little bit later on as well. We're also going to be uh, touching upon, see I told you there was lots to get through tonight, we're also going to be touching upon a brand new um, thing as well that we've uh, brought in this season and that is the heritage numbers. We're just going to put it out there, we're going to discuss that later on and of course the big kit reveal will happen very very shortly indeed and we've got some great players from the past who are going to come out and model it in all their splendour as well for you tonight so I'm sure we're all going to look forward uh, to that and seeing uh, just how well they look in their kit. And we're also going to give you a little bit of an overview as far as how the kit was designed, how it was made and just a little bit of background information that you wouldn't normally possibly be uh, familiar with but we feel it's very very important uh, that you see that and hear that for yourself tonight. So do you know what, does that sound like a lot to get through tonight? Yeah. It certainly does doesn't it? Now, with all our events, obviously we always ask if um, you can keep your phones uh, to either off or silent. I've no chance of be switching them off because we're all going to be snapping away. But if I can ask you to take the opportunity now just to switch your phones to silent, that would be greatly appreciated. And whilst you are doing that, we are going to get the night underway in earnest. Okay, so with four chairs up here on stage, ladies and gentlemen, those chairs are to be filled right now. And a very, very warm welcome to our new signings. George Miller, Luke Molyneux, Harrison Biggins, and our Head of Football Operations, James Coppinger. Who's saying wow there? <laughs> Control yourself, woman. It's bloody hot enough. Goodness me. That's a good start. Isn't it just? Yeah, goodness me. James, brilliant to see you once again. And um, what a day today. What a busy day. We're just looking on the TV now. Today's fixtures are out. I almost forgot to mention those. And uh, there we go. We know where we're going, when we're doing it, how we're doing it. And we'll see what happens at the end of it. So. We're going to, yeah, exactly. There you go. So, you've had a chance to, to look at the fixed up, I presume, James. What, uh, what's, your, what's your thoughts? I think the first one, that was my, my first ever game for Doncaster. Yeah, Bradford City away. Um, hopefully a better result than what we got on the first. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a big standout one, obviously. Big crowd, 20,000 plus, I imagine. They've recruited really well. Um, that'll be a tough one, and then first home game against Sutton. Um, come back here, hopefully the fans will be hearing their numbers, supporting us, and yeah, the lads can put on a show. Um, so the first two, three, uh, or well, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> yeah, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of tough fixtures. I mean, 
There's a lot of good clubs, it's going to be tough, but yeah, we, we, we're ready for them. A couple of derbies in there as well, obviously, um, Mansfield always travel very, very well. There's uh, quite a rivalry between the two football clubs, and, and Grimsby Town bouncing back at the first attempt uh, after that uh, dramatic playoff. Um, Danny Amos, I hear, is, is still celebrating uh, somewhere around Doncaster. <laughs> good lad. <laughs> but, you know, that is a very, very tough competitive league, isn't it? I think it is. I think you know. I think personally, the leagues are getting stronger. Um, you just saw League One last year with with the clubs that are in there, and then you come down this league and you have a look, and yeah, Stockport County have obviously invested as well. We know that's going to be tough. Um, Salford have, have backed uh, their squad as well, so yeah, it's it's going to be tough. But it doesn't matter what league you're in. You have to worry about yourself and concentrate on what you do, and that's what we'll be doing. And some new grounds for our uh, fans to visit. There's obviously. Uh, my local uh, nearest team to me, which is uh, Harrogate Town, there's, uh, there's also Sutton United, it'll be the, possibly the first time. Uh, have we been there in non league, everyone? A few no's and, and yeses, but uh, thankfully it's a grass pitch uh, this time and not the, uh, the artificial uh, surface. And obviously the teams that have come down with us, James, I mean, they'll be looking to bounce back. Uh, certainly Chillingham might pick out there. Neil Harris had a, uh, quite an outspoken. Uh, ran at the end of the season so I think there'll be a large cull there and a big turnover of players and they'll certainly be looking to come at it this season. Yeah it's it's always the same you want to bounce back I mean we've we, well we did it twice first time of asking um, or three times since I've been here um, so it's important the expectation will change from the fans I mean it would be one of the favourites to go up I imagine with the squad that we've got um, and you know the same sort of pressure and expectation will be on them sort of clubs so yeah, again, we're, we're sort of not, too, not looking too much into it and focusing on, on what we're about. I know it's a cliche, but you have to do that. Now, that's what I said to the manager this morning. It's about other teams worrying about us, where there's a, what, you know, instead of us preoccupying ourselves with you know, what they're doing, you know, that's very, very important because, as you say, we're going to be a little bit of a scout. There's going to be added pressure on us with the team having come down. There'll be an expectation for us to bounce straight back. Yeah, especially with what happened last season. For me, it was... Probably one of the season like like no other like like say 24 years of professional football I've never seen anything like it in terms of injury um, senior players not being able to get fit you know change of manager change of staff COVID there's so many things that external factors that I think played a part in us getting relegated and it's it's almost like you know we've worked tirelessly over the the off season um, to try and gain positive momentum you know you probably don't see the work that goes on behind the scenes in terms of recruiting players like these. Um, hopefully more to come in, you know, we've had we've done work at the training ground, you know, I see what goes on at the stadium and how hard people are working, so I think for us it's it's massive and we want to get off to a good start, we want to have a good pre-season, we, we need everybody that's in here to, to support that and get behind the team. Yeah, and I touched upon in my introduction, it's a matter of parking last season, last season's gone, we can't affect that anymore, we can't do anything about it, it's part of the past, we know it's there, but this is about the here and now and this is how we move forward and you know touching upon the recruitment which is you know as re rewards somewhat some at the moment should i say sorry i've not had a lot of sleep um, <laughs> um but the players that were missing last season almost are like new signings aren't they? the john taylors the you know the tom andersons you know tommy rowe really playing on one leg for most of last season wasn't he and you know we should get a fresh fit tommy rowe back this season yeah definitely and they they all have an impact on the rest of the group yeah. you know adam clayton will be fit he's, he's come back in really good shape uh, ben close obviously coming back um yeah it's 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 massive for us and you know it's 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 not that easy to to get it across the fans because they don't see it and they see what happens on a Saturday and you know performances and results didn't go for us last season but there was a lot more that played a part in that um, so like you said that's been parked and we're focusing on you know what's going to happen this season and like you say I watched training today and yeah the lads come back really really fit and even in this heat it's been tough but yeah it's looking good part of you missing pre-season training watching that today no? Yeah, I don't miss it at all, to be honest. <laughs> no, genuinely, like you get to you get to forty year old and you've you've done enough. Um, but what I do like is you know watching how good these are, um, not just these three, but the rest of the group. You know how hard they work. You know we've got a, a real honest, hard working bunch that want to do well. Uh, we're trying to create an environment, a learning environment that you know young players that come in. They can learn, they can improve, they can develop and they can move on or they can come with us and 
hopefully get promoted and, and, and work hard to be successful. And a part of the recruitment is getting, you know, to know the players that you're going to bring in, not just what they do on the field, what the, you know, the like out of, you know, out of the football environment and things like that. It's an intrinsic part of the recruitment process. It is, and, you know, we speak about culture and identity all the time, and for us as a, as a club, you know, throughout my 18 years, my successful periods came when we did have a culture, we did have an identity, and we did know what we were doing and how we were playing, um, you know, managed to... To work hard, like I said, in the off season with with the chief executive, with with the board, with the manager, with with the staff, and you know we've we've worked hard in, in creating or starting to create that again. Um, hence the reason why we we chose to recruit these these players. You know, bring in something that we haven't got um, or we didn't have last season. You know, when they came up and we met them, um, it wasn't just about you know look at what what you can do and how we see you play. And it's you know. These three, we believe, are good characters. You know, they've got more than than what it takes on the pitch. You know, they've, they've all experienced adversity. They've all come through their own journeys, their own pathways into where they are right now. But I genuinely believe that at 23, 24, 25, that they have the potential to go on and, and play at a higher level. And they're coming to a good club as well that can give them that platform. And that's what we say. You know, we can only. I I feel like this club undersells itself massively and has done for years. Um, so you know when 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 they do come here and they do look at this stadium and you know the the environment, you know the town, well city now, city. yeah sorry, <laughs> apologise, um, the city now. I genuinely feel like we've got so much going for us, um, and not just these players. You know Premier League loans. We we, we got voted the, the best in the country in terms of bringing loans in and um, playing loan loan players. For me, speaking to Liverpool, Newcastle, you know. Man City, Arsenal, all the best in the country, like they all want their players to come here. Again, that's something to be celebrated in my opinion. Yeah, very much so. Okay, well, James, thank you very much indeed for that. Do stay with us, of course, and um, we've got the, lad, the new lads up on stage, but before we do have a little chat with them, we'd just like to show you a few clips of them in action right now. None against us, is it? <laughs> Oh, 
Well, that was a nice reaction down here. I don't know what it will like at the back, but uh, very, very positive down here at the front, and lovely to see so many goals going in there. We're going to start with uh, Luke, who's uh, nearest to me. Luke, welcome to the uh, to the football club. You've come from Hartlepool, much to the annoyance of Jess Stelling, who uh, <laughs> <laughs> wanted to know why he didn't go to me. <laughs> I don't know what his problem is, but... Yeah, oh, there we go. Fantastic. Bye -bye. But how are you settling in, Luke? Everything, uh, everything going well? Oh, yeah, everything's going well. It was... Uh... My first proper day back yesterday, and um, no, I've enjoyed it. Obviously, I didn't fully train with the lads. I was just doing my own separate stuff, but yeah, I've enjoyed it. Meeting all the lads and getting to know everyone. And, yeah, it's been good. Enjoyed your time with Hartley Paul, but just come to a junction where you decided it was time to move on. Yeah, I feel like I just wanted to be at a club that could get to, get me to where I wanted to be, and that was at the leagues. And I feel like this is where I need to be. Yeah, good cup run, wasn't it, for, for Harley Paul last season? Obviously, the, the high-profile game at, at Crystal Palace, and did that team seem to, to derail the, the form of the club a little bit towards the latter end? Uh, a little bit. I think the cup competitions carried us a little bit, and I feel like once they were over, the, the squad like depleted a little bit, and um, yeah, we struggled towards the end of the season. Yeah, a bit of a connection there, obviously, with uh, Graham being the, uh, the gaffer last season, uh, so obviously we always kept a little bit of a close eye on the club, but obviously... You, Coming into a club which has just landed in League Two, obviously after last season, your hopes have really got to be to, to really push on and have a strong season this year. Yeah, definitely. That was like the main reason for me to come here. I think if you look at uh, the squads that are in this league, there's a lot of tough teams, and I feel like we'll be definitely up there. There's good players around. I mean, we were talking about it this morning. Again, there's a lot of contracted players, probably the most contracted players we've had in a lot of years. So whether that means we won't have as many loans uh, this season, I don't know. That's beyond my remit as far as that goes. But you're coming into a squad with you know a lot of experience, but a lot of good youth as well. Yeah, definitely. I think that'll help as well with um, people challenging for spots. And I think that'll push players to work even harder and to just push the standard in training like that. And great facilities up at Cantley, and you must be really impressed with the stadium here. Yeah, that was also one of the main reasons why I came here. Obviously, I came here on Monday and uh, met Cops and the gaffer, and uh, obviously seeing the, the stadium was massive. And I've um, only ever been here once before, and that was years ago, and uh, I couldn't remember how big it was. And I showed up, and it's absolutely massive. So, uh, yeah, and even the facilities, like the training ground, obviously, I was surprised with that. And it's, it's a big deal to a player, isn't it? Because, again, something we were talking about, the large majority of your time is spent at the training ground. You know, there's a small percentage of it spent here playing, and obviously then playing away from home, but, you know, a large majority of your time is spent at the training ground, whether it be training, mixing with the lads, eating with the lads and stuff like that, or, you know, doing any recuperation or any rehab and things like that. So, the facility side of things is such a big part to a player, isn't it? Yeah, obviously, like you said, we're there every day, so you want to be enjoying yourself while you're there. And obviously, I know we've moved changing rooms now, we're in a new change room, they've done that up, and obviously, the facilities that they've got, they've got the, obviously the cooks in and the food there, and it's just a good place to bother when you're doing that to go. Fantastic, excellent. Well, Luke, welcome to the club. Thank you very much for your thoughts, and very much for your support. I'm going to turn to uh, Harrison, just uh, sat next to James, and those of you who are as old as me will remember Harrison's dad. Anybody know his, remember his dad? Wayne Biggins, yeah. Barnsley, Man City, Norwich, Stoke. I knew a couple of those, he told me the rest, but there we go. <laughs> Harrison, welcome uh, to the club. Look, looking in great shape and uh, everything like that, and settling in really well. Yeah, it's been, uh, been a great week. Well, we're almost a week into pre-season now. Um, it's been a great start. I've really enjoyed my time time here so far. Um, I'm just excited to, to see what's to come. Is it four years with Fleetwood you had uh, prior to coming? Uh, five seasons five. there, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's been a while. It's, it's nice to have a change. And to come, come to a, such a great club is, is brilliant for me. Yeah, and you know, obviously that change of scenery it reinvigorates you as a player, doesn't it? You, sometimes you just need that new challenge. It's, it's part of football. Yeah, it's, it, change is always nice. Um, Probably overstayed my welcome a little bit there towards the end. Why is that? It's just, it's just nice to get out and, and you know, <laughs> see my friends. All oh, right, okay. Say the least. Um, but no, like, like I say, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to this season and the challenge ahead, um, and hopefully we get this club promoted. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a toss of a coin, really. It could, it could easily be in Fleetwood that, that came down in, instead of Rovers. I mean, you know, Fleetwood had quite a struggle last season, you know, as we did, and that was. 
that's a club that you know flirts with mid table, but I mean we have far different aspirations here. Is that is that one of the parts that drew you to the football club? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think for them to stay up is a successful season. Um, but you look at you look at a club like Doncaster, um, they should certainly be in League One, if not higher. Uh, definitely. So that's our aim now. Obviously, we've got to look at this season first and get get us out of this league, and then see where it takes us. We've seen the goals between the three of you there, and that was something that we certainly struggled with last season, getting the combinations right up front, getting the service right uh, to the forward players, and getting them goals from midfield. So that's certainly something you'll be hoping to contribute. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, started adding goals to my game last year, and hopefully I can, I can add to that this season. Keep making the box and keep getting up to George and supporting him, and hopefully he squares a few to tap-ins there. <laughs> A bit useful, isn't it? <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you're settling in okay with the lads and everything. Obviously, you know, coming in into a new group, it's always difficult. But certainly not on your own with a lot of new arrivals coming at the same time. Yeah, the, the first day is always difficult getting to know new lads and you know your new surroundings and what have you. But I'm three or four days in now, and it just feels like oh, it's, it's a comfortable place to come and work, and it's somewhere you really look forward to to coming in the morning. And in all fairness, that's what. Most of the players always say, you know, because it is that sort of football club, it's a very homely club, it's a very welcoming club, and it's a very pleasant uh, club to be at, and we're delighted to have you here as well. Harrison, thank you very much. For you. Thank you. So, George, it's, it's all on you, 25 goals this season, how about that then? Yeah, I know that winger don't pass much, does he? So I might just <laughs> Yeah, stop him coming in on his left. Well, as long as we don't tell everybody else that. Um, obviously, your parent club was Barnsley, but you spent, you know, quite a lot of time away from. Uh, yes, get them out of the way now. <laughs> By the way, he's not there anymore. He's now on a player, so just to remind you of that. But a good stint at Walsall last season. What, what, what did he take from from his stint there? I played games for the first time in a while. Like I was going to get a caravan. I've been to that many clubs like recently. So <laughs> just to get just to get settled. Yeah, just to get settled and playing week in week out was good. And then. Coming here, I've got the opportunity um, to talk to you again. Have you, have you signed? Is it a two or three-year deal you've signed? Three-year deal. Three-year deal. So you know, you look at that. You just touched upon the reason why I bring that up is because you, you're looking at a three-year deal here, and you think, yeah, I can really make a statement here and really, you know, lay some roots down as well. Yeah, exactly. As a footballer, like football's great and everything, but you know, you're more. Um, there's more like, than just us players, we've got our families and everything that have, have to move. So just having a bit of continuity and knowing where we're going to be for the next few years is a big thing to settle your mind off the pitch while looking on it. Yeah, the, the, too many people, I suppose, as fans, because they're so focused and concentrated on you wearing a Rover shirt and playing 90 minutes and things like that. It's the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. What a lot of people don't realise is, you know, they, they will relocate and live away from the families and things like that, which, and, you know, is a little bit like out of a suitcase a lot of the time. Exactly, yeah. The amount of hotels I've been at, it's ridiculous. I've like, got an itinerary of them all. But, yeah, we're in, in the hotel for the first few weeks, then we'll get settled, and then so as the season starts, we'll be in, like, our comfortable zone and get, like, focused on the pitch then. Fantastic. And, um, Obviously, pre-season is always a little bit of a slog, and it's it's been uh, very very hot temperatures. But going well for yourself so far? Yeah, it's going really well. Um, like a lot of other teams are not not even in yet, so being in on, on Monday straight away back into it, we've got all them under our belt, and hopefully that gives us the edge on other teams. Is it a different pre-season to, compared to when you first started? Because obviously, when James were the first started, and been flogging them to death up and down hills, and uh, if you if you're not being sick at the side of the pitch, well, you're not pulling your weights on. Yeah, exactly. I think like stuff's come on and like at the start of um, my career, I had like all the managers and it would just run, 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 and you still run, run, run. But like, there's a bit more balls involved now, and obviously, Gaffer, he's a bit of a younger manager. He's only recently been a player, so he knows what what sort of like makes players tick and what works rather than just slogging every day. Players tend to come back in, in good nick anyway. Now they, they, they tend to look after themselves, you know, a hell of a lot when you look at Jack Grealish and. Uh, <laughs> he was having a really good time, but you know, looking at you guys, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's not really an awful lot to, to get rid of, is there? No, not at all. Like, you've got to come back fit, it gives you the edge, really. If you come back back three stone overweight and steaming on the first day, you're going to get shown up and you're probably going to get shown the door. So, the better, like, Nicky come back in, he's going to give you the best chance to be playing. Fantastic. Very, very best of luck with pre season and the rest of the season as well.
We're going to come back to James a little bit later on in the piece, but in the meantime, put your hands together once again for James Coppinger, Harrison Biggins, Lee Molyneux and George Miller. Look out for that, George. Tell you. <laughs> right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've uh, had a brief uh, intro there with the uh, with our new signings. Great to uh, to meet them and hear their thoughts as well. Today's been a very very uh, busy day as far as uh, announcements are concerned. I'd like to move on uh, to the next one, which is an integral part of uh, Doncaster Rovers as, on a business footing and you know moving forward as involvement goes. So, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together representing EcoPower this evening, Lewis Collars. Lewis, thanks for coming along uh, tonight. Obviously, we are now known as the EcoPower Stadium, but um, following today's announcement, the uh, brand will be on the front of the shirt as well. What's your feelings on that? Um, I think um, as soon as we get, you know, we've been involved with the stadium now for the past six months or so, and uh, for us, it's been absolutely fantastic as a business. And um, as soon as the opportunity arose for the, you know. The, the, the naming rights in terms of front of shirt, we, we, you know, we leaped at the opportunity. At the end of the day, we're a local business. Yeah, we've got businesses that operate outside of Doncaster, um, but fundamentally, the vast majority of our businesses are, are here in the town, or sorry, here in the city. And um, it's very important to us to have visibility within the city to give back to the community as much as we possibly can. What better place to do that than with the football club? It's always and will always be the focal point of the uh, of the city. So we're very, very proud and very, very privileged. And, and flipping it back, I suppose, to, to a selfish point of view from your business end, what it does for your business is it, it gives your business exposure. It, it puts your brand out there to people who would possibly not otherwise have known who you are and then if they see the brand they'll say oh, well what do they do then so that's that's a really good point from your point of view yeah i mean in in reality of course it does it gives a brand awareness and you know one of the reasons why we did the stadium was that if we go back around about 18 months ago we had a few businesses under the brand of eco power then we went on the acquisition trail we bought a lot of different businesses and then we, at one go we rebranded them all at one time all under the name of eco power and we needed within doncaster very quickly that brand awareness and when the opportunity came up for the naming rights for the stadium again we jumped at that because there were very few opportunities that would give us that platform for exposure and you know for us as a business it's been absolutely fantastic and i'm you know looking around the room here today i would imagine that over the past year or so you know Probably a year ago, probably nobody here knew of Eco Power. Now you're sick of the name of it or whatever. And if you are, that's fine. Then we're doing a good job. So, and and hoping to see plenty of green skips on people's drives as well. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I mean, there's there's two parts of our business. You know, we have we have lots of different businesses, but fundamentally, it all comes down to two main functions. You know, we've got a construction business, which is you know we do um, plant hire, civil engineering, surfacing, all that all that type of stuff. And then we've got a, a waste management and recycling business and a fuels business. So what we can't recycle, we turn into fuel. That's used as a replacement for coal. That's our business. It's as simple as that. But a big part of that within Doncaster as well is skips. So, you know, you know, if, if people need skips within the Doncaster area, hopefully they'll, they'll turn to eco power. Obviously, that's what we... Don't, uh, don't phone Lewis personally, because he, he, he's not sat in an office answering the phone for everything. But uh, it was a flippant example of just, just a small area of, of the business. But obviously, L and E are being great partners for the football club. We, we must give them a mention and, you know, don't forget their involvement. They've been, they've been fantastic. I'm sure as well they'll continue, you know, to play their part, but, um, you know, moving on from, from Rovers in a way, you're getting involved with, with Rossington as well, you, you're throwing a lot of um, uh, support their way as well. Just tell us what, what the thinking is there. Well, I think one of our main, you know, we've got a few businesses within Doncaster, uh, a very large business in Rosso itself, so, you know, they approached us um, at the start of the last season and said, would we get further involved with the club? Um, and we saw it as, a, again, a, a great opportunity. Up until last year, we'd been involved with other non-league clubs. We were the main sponsors for, for Stocksbridge Steels, again, in South Yorkshire. But it wasn't really our homeland in terms of, the, you know, the head office, heart of the business, everything is here in Doncaster. 
So we did a, we did a short term deal with them, but the way that we're looking at it right now, obviously what we can do for Rovers, we want to do as much as we possibly can. But equally, with us having a, a, a large, sizable business there in Rosley, then yeah, we took on the main sponsorship there. We're also helping them financially and supporting them. And we want to take them on a little bit of a journey through non-league as well to try and develop them as much as we can within that space. On a minor level, then you know, in the hope that they could become a little bit supportive, or as if either a feeder club for Rovers, or you know, for equally when uh, players don't quite make it, a Rovers could d drop down into yeah. into Rosso. That's it's quite a common factor, you know, and we're very mindful of that. So, uh, so yeah, it's we sponsor lots of different things within within this community, lots of football clubs, lots of rugby clubs, all all manner of sports, boxing, uh, golfers, everything. But you know. Uh, it kind of, and what we do with Rosso, very important to us, but you know, what we do here at this football club, for us to be front of shirt sponsors here, is actually is the pinnacle for our business. What's the, what's the length of the deal on the, the shirt deal, if you don't mind me So we've, uh, we've taken an initial two year deal with a two year option, you know, we sincerely hope that it will be uh, more than a, a four year deal for us because, you know, we're, you know, we, we always say we, our, our our board and my partners were a, basically were a collective of four, and we always say what we've done here, even though it's only a short space of time, only six months ago, is the best thing we've ever done as a business. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we've we've done that, and then we've we've launched the Eco Power Foundation this year as well, um, where we're trying to put money back into, I guess what you might see as some of the most disadvantaged, disengaged, or deprived people within the community as well. So we're trying to do as much as we possibly can. All of our work, or the majority of our work, is here within the city, and we're trying to do as much as we can with the community, and the football club is very much at the forefront of that. And coming in at a time, obviously, it's, it, it's really a, a fresh start for Rovers this season, obviously coming down into League Two, and it'd be fantastic to start that journey with a, a successful season. Listen, of course it would be fantastic to start with a successful season, but I'm, I'm a firm believer in life that football, you know, it, it, it comes in cycles, it just, it's, it's, it's one of those things. If you look back at Rovers over the years, they're no different, history sort us the same thing. You know, Rovers had a very successful period from 2008 up to 2016, long period in the Championship. That then resulted at the end of that, then dropping down into League Two, out straight back, then had a long period of, uh, of relative, relative success in League One, with aspirations of going up into the Championship, didn't quite work out and dropped down again this year. But sometimes in life, the same as football, you've got to step back, reset in order to, you know, in order yeah. to move forward. And uh, I'm a firm believer in that. And I think that this could be, and hopefully this could be a fantastic new chapter for, uh, for Rovers. Certainly is. And we're absolutely delighted to have you guys on board. We're delighted that you feel you're receiving and getting plenty out of your uh, very kind and, and very, very generous support of the football club and we really do appreciate it. Lewis Calders, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Can you power? So there we go. If you didn't know what they did beforehand, that just gives you a little bit of an insight as to what Eco Power are all about. And of course, uh, we will uh, be revealing the uh, brand new shirt in a very, very short while. We now move on to the next stage of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, and just as important as the rest of it as well, a brand new project that we are launching down here at Doncaster Rovers, and um, I'm not the man to tell you about it, but I'm going to ask the questions to the gentleman who can. So put your hands together for Sean Lockwood. Nice to see you, Sean. I feel like I'm about to do the worst duet in the world. <laughs> the worst what? Duet in the world. Yeah, you could, yeah Westlife have nothing to worry about, I can promise you that. Okay, so um, I've touched upon it. It's a brand new project. I'm not going to steal anybody's thunder here. I'm going to ask you to enlighten everybody as to what it is. They're a favourite, folks. The Heritage Project. So, ultimately, what we wanted to do is, is came from an idea probably around two years ago now, just before the first lockdown. Um, and it's something that's just kind of gone gone on hold, but we wanted to recognise the, the history of the club, we wanted to do that through the former players who've, who've played for us. Um, one of the things we wanted to do is create a bit of a former players association, as we've spoke about before, through, through COTS. We've, we create good relationships with the players who are here, and they always talk fondly, you know, you've done it, um, reunion events, and, and the players always talk fondly. 
on what it was like here. Maybe we want to try and touch upon that and, and create a bit of connection between former players and the club and, and therefore the fans as well. So we've launched the Heritage Project um, and Forever Rovers. Every player who's played a senior appearance since 1901 um, is being recognised with a, a Heritage number going all the way up to Rio Griffiths, who was our last debutant. Um, and it's something that we want the younger players through the academy to also aspire to do, to be part of as well. So, um, yeah, we're, we're really excited about it, actually. I'm going to throw a grenade in here now. I hope you know the answer. Okay, why does it start at 114? Um, the first teams um, have kind of put all together. So, because we've only got data going back so far, what we've basically done is anyone who's represented the club uh, in those early ages, we've just kind of listed them. And then what we've tried to do through John Coyle, club historian, who's, who's done an amazing job, uh, is then list those in order of appearances when they've made that first appearance. Fantastic. Well, I mean, it, it, was, it was just curiosity from my point of view. You know, people were on the sure have said, oh, why don't you start with number one, but uh, obviously. Now, this is something which we've seen in cricket. I think cricket was one of the first, um, you know, sports I actually saw it, and it was a little bit of an anomaly, really, wasn't it? Because a lot of people were seeing these numbers and they were drawing, you know, all the wrong conclusions. Oh, why is he wearing this number and, you know, wearing that number? But I think it's something which, which should be very dear and, and very, very close to the individuals involved, isn't it? I think so. And what we want it to be is something that the younger players aspire to. So, um, in the CDA, which is the, the area where, obviously, the five-a-side pitches are, uh, we're going to rebrand that and, and put the heritage numbers of the people who've come through the academy and through Doncaster yeah. on there as well. And, and when we get a youngster who's, who's made their appearance and made a senior player presentation, we want to be able to then put, put that sticker on and, and it's something that people can aspire to be as they're coming through the ranks as well. Now obviously um, the heritage numbers always go on the shirts, so we are going to see the shirts in a, in a, in a short while. Is there, is there anything you can reveal as to whereabouts on the shirt it's going to be or do we wait until? Um, they won't be going on the first team kits at this stage because um, there's only so much you can do with EFL branding. So for example with, with James's shirt, uh, the gold shirt, which had the 26 on all the way through the, the material, we actually probably broke through EFL rules by doing that. Um, and his hand slapped a few times, but because he's cops he gets away with it. <laughs> Fantastic. And yeah, because as you say, you know, probably a lot of people don't realise that there's only so much you can put on a shirt. There's only so much advertising you can sell on it, um, areas on the shirt, and, and only so much detail that you can put on it. Yeah, numbers are a big thing that they are, they're unkeen on. They only want the one number, which is the squad number, really, more than anything else. Uh, like I say, the, uh, the 26 that was going through the gold pattern, uh, we got his hand slapped a little bit, but, but not too much. Fantastic. So, um, very, very shortly, ladies and gentlemen, we will be seeing the uh, shirts and will, will, we see, um, will we see the heritage numbers to the, uh, to the individuals involved as well on that? Potentially. Oh, he's, I tell you what, he's, he's not giving, a, giving an awful lot away tonight, is he? Because I don't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sean, you just spoil all the mystique there, haven't you? Goodness me, goodness me. But it's an exciting stage of the season, isn't it? Close season, you know, pre-season's always very, very exciting. There's lots of expectation and you know, the, the reveal of a brand new kit and a, a fantastic new project like this as well. No, and to be fair, well done and thank you for everyone who's come out because we know that at the 18 months on the pitch hasn't been great, we know that, but you know, this is the first time we've kind of done this kind of kit launch and on fixture release day as well and to have over 300 people in the room is, is amazing, so thank you for everyone for, for coming out. And <laughs> And obviously, uh, while, while we are at it, I suppose season ticket renewals, um, they're, they're open for people still to, uh, still to take up their options. We've got some lovely people in the back who are wearing their t-shirts who will gladly take people's money if they want to renew their season tickets. Yeah, we'll, we'll literally take anything as well, the cars, <laughs> money. Not IOUs though, no, definitely not. Sean, thank you very much for that. That is the uh, Doncaster Rovers Heritage Project. project. A Christmas one tonight. A big thank you, ladies and gentlemen, to Sean Lockwood. Okay, fantastic. I tell you what, it's not getting any cooler, is it? Goodness me. Right, okay. Get these kits out, he's just said. Well, your wish is my command. Okay. We're delighted to welcome some former players who are joining us tonight. Please, God, the same names are uh, behind those doors. Are they, Mark? They most certainly are. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, first through, he played in goal for us. He was an absolutely fantastic goalkeeper. 
And what a good looking lad he is too. Put your hands together for Jan Butts. Lee Butler fall then, goodness me, how are we doing pal? I'm still not catching you up, I'm a bit late for that anyway. Fantastic to see you, the uh, shirt looks great. Ladies and gentlemen, there we go. Jan Butts, 976. Okay, I'll just let Howard get a, uh, a nice individual image there of Jan. Fantastic. Okay, well Jan's not going to be on his own too much longer because we're delighted to welcome an absolute firm favourite and a diamond lad as well. Put your hands together for Jimmy O'Connor. So there we have it ladies and gentlemen, our brand new outfield shirt, we're just going to let you uh, digest that for a moment. And Jimmy is 992, wonderful. As you can see the Oxen uh, branding on there as well, which we will come on to in a very, very short while. Okay ladies and gentlemen, our next former Rovers player is about to make his entrance. Pretty hands together for Rob Jones. So we've got Rob there, 1071, that is Rob's heritage number, 1071, just allow Howard to uh, get the all-important picture. Okay, next through the door, former Rovers player, uh, regular favourite down here, cracking guy as well, put your hands together for Barry Miller. Okay, Barry, 896. How are you going to um, grab a uh, image? Working hour tonight, there we go. Fantastic. 896 on Barry's shirt there. Fantastic stuff. Okay, next to the door, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure we all remember him. Make him feel very welcome once again for Jim Dobbin. <laughs> Wow, 598 is the number on uh, Jim's shirt there. Okay, fantastic. Lovely stuff. Okay, next through the door, winging his way into the room. Sorry about that. Put your hands together for John Buckley. And John's heritage number is 600. There we go, fantastic stuff. Okay, next to the door, do not argue with this man because he can still put a ball away in the back of the net. Put your hands together for Colin Douglas. And Cullen's heritage number is 567. There we go. Congratulations uh, to Colin. Next through the door, words cannot describe. What a great lad. Jason Price. Great to see Jason on that stage with us once again. Jason's heritage number is 983. Okay. 
part of a very, very famous Doncaster Brothers a partnership, shall we say. Delighted to have him here tonight. Put your hands together. A very warm welcome for Glyn Snowden. Okay, Glenn's heritage number is 518. There we go, just let Howard uh, get that uh, image. And last but by no means least, a very warm Rovers welcome to Steve Lister. Okay, Steve's heritage number is 542. There we go, just let Howard get a, um, an image of that there. Excellent stuff. Okay, just gonna grab a word. Please don't be offended if I don't ask you anything, will you? Mm -hmm. I better go to Rob because he's the tallest. So. <laughs> Rob, it's, it's a fantastic um, initiative by the club, this isn't it, to, to recognize the player's service. Oh, right, what's so, uh, I think. I have to speak to everybody when uh, we, it's very nice when we get asked back to, to a club we played for and, and spend special time here, so it's always nice. Fantastic. And thoughts on the new shirt? It's lovely, it's a bit tight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't play in this one, but yeah, it's lovely. We'll, we'll, we'll just blame that on the size and then I think. Uh, uh, Jimmy, great to, to have you back. I know you always love uh, coming back. Uh, I'll just um, take that. Hello. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you, you hang on to that. <laughs> Can you hang on to that? Yeah. yeah but... <laughs> Always nice to be back and uh, must love uh, the, the new shirt as well. Yeah, smart. Very, very nice. Um, I'm sure everyone else will, will think it as well. Um, just re reiterating what the big man just said there, I think we've all had um, some really special times with this club, so whenever we get a chance to come back, it's, uh, it's a massive thanks from us as well. Yeah, and great, and, and great to have a, a little bit of recognition as far as the, uh, the heritage number, and it's etched into to Rovers folklore uh, forevermore, isn't it? Yeah, lovely touch. I just hope we don't get a bill for this shirt now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be, we'll be asking for it back, don't worry. <laughs> That's why we're not putting names on the back, isn't it? Right, and uh, Jace, you, 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 have you still got a mic? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, fish, fish, you all right, then? Bit big on my arms though. Is it? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. Only... <laughs> but again, just to reiterate what the lads have said, then obviously you've got your own heritage number, and that's, you know, not every club does that, do they? No, I've, I've, I've had for a thousand clubs and it's a good one. <laughs> But yeah, a, a great touch from the club, and uh, obviously, again, just, just outlining your contributions to the football club in the time you were here. Yeah, loved it. Every, every time I get a call to come back, it's always a yes. Yeah. I get free food. <laughs> <laughs> and I see my third mother, Kaza. There she is. There we go. Bang, bang. They're fantastic. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Our heritage project has been launched. Our heritage numbers on our former players. A big round of applause for all of our players on stage now. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. I will allow you to stand down. Thank you very much for your attendance tonight. Give a big round of applause, folks. We'll be able to see them bloody numbers this season. We will. <laughs> right, okay. Um, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Obviously the, uh, the shirts are out there. Did we all get a picture? Yeah. Did we all get a video? Yeah. Are we going to post it yet? No.
Uh, excellent, that's what we like to hear, fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to invite our uh, Head of Football Operations back up on stage, bless you, thank you. Uh, back up on stage now, we're now going to uh, talk about uh, the kit overall, so put your hands together once again for James Coppinger. <laughs> Where were you at the skate park? Skate park, they should I say. It's good, isn't it? It looks nice, doesn't it? And what number are you? 26. It's a great initiative, isn't it, from the football club to, to do this? Yeah, it's massive. Um, you know, watching all the, the sort of legends or the, the older players come out. You know, when you put on a shirt as a footballer, it's, it's, it's huge. It's, you touched on it before, it's a uniform. Um, so it's, it's just as big for us as it is for the fans. You know, growing up as a kid, you, you're waiting for the kit to come out, you know, Christmas, birthday. Um, so we know how much it means to everybody and, and it's, you know, them, them lads will be buzzing in there. You know, we've sat in there, had some food, had a bit of crack. They, they, they spent so many special times here. You know, especially the lads I played with, not especially, but you know, I, I know how much it means to Rob, Jimmy, uh, Jan, JJ, you know, listening to him, uh, like, you miss them, you know, that, that's the biggest thing, when you retire from football or stop playing football, you don't see each other, um, so when we get together and we actually spend time with each other, it's, it's so good to just, to just reminisce, really. Now, obviously, the, the kit is a little bit of a back to tradition, as far as, um, I, I like the kit from last season, I must say it was, it was a nice little bit of a change, it was a little bit of a departure, as far as, I know I might be in a minority there, but I'm speaking for myself, you know, but I mean, from, from, a, from a club point of view, from a business point of view, you just can't keep turning the same thing out over and over again, so there has to be a little bit of a departure now and then. This is a little bit of a return, obviously, to tradition, there's lots of white in it. What was the, the thinking behind the, the design of the kit? Who was involved in the design of it? I think, um, first of all, like EPS, so Elite Pro Sports, um, for people that aren't aware, they're literally on our doorstep, so they bay, they're based literally just behind the keep mode. Um, so Shane, Shane, the owner, who obviously founded Oxen, um, it's like having your own sort of personalised branding. It's, it's unbelievable, their sort of attention to detail, the communication, the way they are with us, has been has been has been unreal. So they're listening to to fans in terms of you know the the piece on the back, um, the arms, um, the bit this little bit here, um, the collar, um, the obviously traditional hoops, and then you know we've we've gone to Oxen this year, which which again is a, is a massive is a massive plus for us because I thought Lewis uh, from Eco Power spoke really really well um, in terms of how important it is to to get behind local businesses, um, and Oxen are one of them. So for us, it's it's been a, a, a big thing. You know, they've they've taken a lot of time and a lot of effort in designing the shirt, and, and we just hope that everybody likes it. Yeah, and they're, and they're certainly pushing their brand out through lots of different sports, mainly rugby league. Uh, you know, rugby union as well. So you know, from their point of view, getting the Oxen brand, you know, on a football kit, I think it's possibly the first football kit that they've done, I might be wrong, I'm not sure, but certainly the actual brand, so the, the Club Doncaster brand obviously has been in that position, hasn't it, for the last uh, two or three years? It has, yeah, and I think for them it's, it's, a, big, it's a big step forward. Um, I'd lie, I'd be lying if I, care, if, I, if, if I said I'm coming up here and try to lie about the brand in terms of the quality of, of stuff that they actually produce is unbelievable. Um, you know, we've gone for a different, a different look, an urban look, uh, the skate park just down from Candy Park. Yeah, so if you're down there, you saw the shirt <laughs> before everybody else. Um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's a big hit with the players. As is the training kit. As is all the kit that the EPS have produced. Again, it's the kit man. Um, a lot of people sort of spend a lot of time in designing it. It's not just yeah we like that one. It's fabric. It's it's how it looks, colour, style. Um, yeah, it, it, a lot of a lot of sort of effort has gone into it. So again, I hope I hope people appreciate um, what goes into it, and and they're local. They're literally on our doorstep. So I, again, it, it's massive for us. I, rem I remember talking to you when we when we first got signed up with Nike, and obviously it's the same principle as far as you know. If you're wearing nice kit, 
you're wearing nice training gear, you feel a million dollars, you're walking out, you're walking out 10 feet tall, it makes you feel an awful lot better as well, doesn't it? Yeah, I, th I always said as a player, you know, you, you look good, you feel good, you play good, and, and that's what it's about, you know. You know, we joke about it, Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday, they haven't, they're wearing last year's kit because they can't get their kit because they've got a supplier sort of thousands Yeah, it's a rare, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and our supplier's on our doorstep, so I, I, I go round the corner to get a few freebies. Um, yeah, no, it's been uh, struggling out and everything, uh, Oak Thompson, yeah. 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 Oh, well, actually, we can go around the corner and we can ring them up and they bring it over to us and, you know, the beauty of having it on your doorstep, but also the care and attention to detail that they, they've given us. No, for a lot of people, they don't care about the kit because, you know, it, it just... I, I can never get my head around that. I mean, I, I, I'm like, you're just not wait for kids, new kits to come out and I'm on the phone to my cousin and things like that. Have you seen this? Have you seen that? And, you know, I, I think it's such an important part. It's identity. It's it's the look of it. And, you know, watching your team, it's it's such a big part for me. Yeah, and you can see, you can hear the fans again in terms of feedback. You know, last year, the numbers on the back, a lot of feedback with regards to you couldn't see who was... Who's who? Um, you know the the actual sort of small stripes, split opinion, um, or small hoops. But again, going back to dish, to, to, uh, to tradition, um, get my words out. Um, I think it's massive. I think I absolutely love it. I think I've been here 18, but I've played for 18 years, and I think it's probably one of the best I've seen, to be honest. And a big, is it going to be black numbers doing now on the back? Or? It is, yeah. Yeah, black yeah. numbers again, yeah. yeah. On the back and a new a new ball as well for this season which you can uh, just see in the background uh, Puma have done a, another design hopefully the markings all let's down a bit longer than what they did uh, last season but um, so we've got the home kit the away kit as yet hasn't uh, been revealed we're not going to be uh, unleashing that for uh, for a period of time as yet Mark's doing his best Keith Harrison all there Middle of July, fantastic excellent stuff so something again uh, to look forward to I have no clue Please don't try and get me in the, in the corner of the room. I've no clue what it's going to be or anything like that, but all will be revealed in the fullness of time. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The Doncaster Rovers new home, home shirt brought to you in association with Oxen. And if you absolutely love the shirt, well, we can take uh, some orders from you. We can take payments from you tonight to reserve your shirts. Uh, you can do that at the back of the room. In fact, the uh, behind the partition wall over there. There's hands being waved furiously. So if you would like to get involved with the brand new kit. Say again. Right, okay. Thanks for that. It's not like on telly, is it, that? <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to say thank you once again to James for his contribution tonight. James, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for your thoughts and comments on that. Guess who's on stage next? <laughs> Uh, going to welcome Sean Lockwood back up onto the stage. He's going to uh, uh, talk about all things season tickets and uh, tickets around the stadium and be as, as informative as ever. Wow. It's usually a slow hand clap, isn't it? Slow, slow, yeah. yeah, it did, didn't it? I was, I was concerned, but I shouldn't have been. Sean, over to you. Um, just kind of on it again, but we talked about it earlier, just want to thank everyone in terms of their support over the close season. So, um, obviously last year was difficult in terms of when we went on sale with season tickets. We'd, we'd had a year without fans in the stadium, um, and then we went on sale, I think around mid-June, um, not really knowing if we were going to have fans back in the stadium, in all honesty, at that point, because we'd not been given the green light. So, the best comparison I can give is the last full season ticket window, which was actually when we finished sixth in the playoffs uh, before the 2019-20 season, believe it or not. Um, and between adults, seniors and young people, um, were 20 actual season tickets higher than what we were at this point last year, uh, in 2019-20, which given the fact that was six in League One finish compared to relegation League One is just phenomenal. So just a huge, huge thank you to everyone who's gone out and bought a season ticket. Um, you know, it's, it, football clubs always always have a core support, and you know we we really do rely on that because it is the lifeblood of any football club, isn't it? And support, and it's supporting us through success, support through adversity as well. And 
you know, if the supporters can see what we're doing on the club side, you know, you'd like to think that as a, a favourable feel with those guys as far as, you know, giving them the the feel good as far as, you know, making that commitment. Because it is a commitment, there's no two ways about it. It is, it's a commitment, it's, a, it's an incredibly hard commitment with everything that's happening in terms of cost of living, utilities, petrol, you know, we're all, we're all feeling it. I mean, we had it in terms of the stadium, the electricity bills when you put those floodlights on, are, are skyrocketing uh, from that side of things. But um, one of the things we were keen to do this year was reduce season ticket prices. Uh, the supporters board really helped in terms of that and, and challenged us and, and to be honest I had an idea and, and they completely scrapped it and ripped it up and, and we came out with what we had um, which I think is probably the cheapest season ticket we've had since the early 2000s um, which is phenomenal really from that side of things um, they, they've been on sale at the early bird until, until the 30th of June and then there's, there's a small price rise as we get close to the new season but we've also put the match packages on sale now which are the 5 and 10 ticket packages give you a little bit of of freedom and choice and, and the memberships as well which will provide discount on match days. You know getting getting youngsters into the stadium is, is absolutely paramount for the, the future support. You see that's seventeens and under, you know, five pounds and you know that's that's fantastic from the club's point of view and that's making it accessible to the youngsters to come and watch football. Yeah, the the juniors in terms of seventeen and under it's always the highest highest number in terms of season tickets that we do. Um, it doesn't generate as much money in terms of how we do it, but what it does do is, is create the future fan base, um, and that's what we're working on. I know I get slaughtered to a certain extent in terms of the focus I put on the Family Excellence Award and, and what we try and do with families, but families are the, the life culture and the kids are the life culture of the club moving forward, uh, and it's what we need to do. You, know, you, you pick the football team at seven and we want it to be a Doncaster Rovers. Yeah, we want them walking around in Rovers shirts and not Man United, Arsenal and Chelsea and things like that. Absolutely, it's brilliant to see how many kids are here tonight wearing the shirts. So again, just it's phenomenal support and, and the fact that people are they're still proud to be part of, of this, this club is, is absolutely amazing. Whether it's the, the former players or, or the fans or, or the future fans and, and the kids all around us. So obviously people can, uh, we've, got, we've got games coming up, we've got a pre-season programme. Uh, in place as we um, as we, we've seen the program for the actual campaign, but we've we've games obviously here at the the, uh, the Eco Power Stadium, Huddersfield Town and Rotherham United, two two marquee championship uh, games, and uh, people can buy tickets uh, for those games tonight. Can yeah, tickets, tickets on sale for the friendlies, uh, the match packages, and, and membership on sale at a discounted price, along with season tickets until the 30th of June. And again, Suzanne and Donald. Have, the box office team are, are about there, ready to, to take any service if anybody wants to, but I'm really looking forward to the season. I think, you know, seeing the, everything what Cops has said and the new players have said and, and speaking to Gaddy, I think it's going to be a really exciting year. Uh, just, to, just a little footnote as well to the fixtures, not as many Tuesday night games here at the stadium, there's uh, a little bit of an impact there with, with the World Cup. Obviously there will still be a Carabao uh, Cup and Papa John's fixtures respectively. If you haven't seen the news today, Rovers have drawn Lincoln City at home in the first round of the Carabao Cup and Newcastle United have been added to Lincoln and Barnsley in the Papa John's uh, group stages of that competition. So the Papa John's fixtures, they will be announced in due course but obviously the Carabao Cup first round that will be between the 30th and the 6th of no, they won't. That'll be between the 6th and the 13th, isn't it? Yeah, dates to be confirmed, but that's yeah. the date that we'll try and squeeze it in. Uh, there's there's two only two games in November, that's because of the FA Cup first and second round is taking place the first weekend of the last weekend of November. Right, okay, so obviously if, if November looks a little bit bare, then that's obviously yeah, the reason behind that. It's a little bit of a unique season, obviously with the World Cup, the Premier League and the Championship are the only two leagues to actually shut down for six weeks, League One and League Two. Uh, respectively carry on regardless of that competition happening. Sean, a delight as always, informative as ever. Thank you very much indeed for your contribution tonight. Thanks, mate. Thank you. So there we go. The new shirt is out. We've seen it. We like it. Thank God. Do we like it? Yes. Excellent stuff. Do you want to buy it? <laughs> Right, get them doors locked. Right. <laughs> Great stuff. Well, absolutely delighted once again, everybody, to see you tonight. If you're as hot as me, you'll be wanting to get some fresh air or you'll be wanting to get up and move about. We really do appreciate your company and attendance tonight. And we look forward to seeing you at the start of a new era, the start of a new season, from all of us here at Rovers. Enjoy the rest of your summer. We look forward to you next time. Bye-bye.